So I am here to bring my instant match reaction after England have just beaten Scotland 2-1 in like the first leg of the um of, of Group D's World Cup um group stage. Um that was just mad because I think it was like football can be such a game of two halves and that is a complete good example of 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 that theory um for the for the first half i think scotland kind of came out really quickly and i think that's what england were trying to do and they were trying to trying to like compete with that and that was that was just like the first five minutes but england managed to to get their foot on the ball and just play some football and really kind of um take the game to scotland after that first like rush of mad five minutes um erin cuthbert also had that chance quite early on that that, that that just went wide and it was getting like end-to-end -end sort of stuff and you're thinking someone needs to kind of get this game under the wraps now and just like calm it down a little bit to, so um either england or scotland could actually start playing some 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 decent football so obviously talk, the, the first goal comes from a bizarre VAR, like there's so much stuff going on about VAR at the moment, not only just in the, the women's game, in the men's game as well, and people are for it, people are against it. But it was bizarre because the game had already kept on playing. So obviously um, uh, Cross was whipped in by Frank Kirby and it hits the, the Scotland defender, I think it was Doherty on the arm. And the new rule is that if your arm is, makes you look bigger or is in a, is in a, a wrong position, that it's a, it's an ultimate um it's an ultimate pick fr uh free kick or penalty so it was it was bizarre and at the time i didn't think anything of it and then the the, the telly started showing the replays and you're like okay maybe yeah i could see why why that was going um obviously scotland fans won't be happy with that but if you look at it like if you like if i was in the position of a scotland fan i would feel quite hard done by from it, it it's one of them but anyway to keep paris steps up and like fires home an amazing penalty and what I love was after the penalty take, she ran to the bench and obviously Tony Duggan was injured. She's like, there, yeah, oh, yeah. Like, it, it was amazing and it just shows the, the, the team morale. Then it, it gets to the second goal um, and Ellen White manages to slot it home. She, obviously, she had an earlier goal, which was um, disallowed. I think that was from VAR as well. So, absolute credit to Ellen White for, for her performance today because she... I think covered every inch of every blade of grass on that field and I think she was really important in that in that in that leading the line at the front and obviously there was debate as to whether Jodie Taylor should be starting and, and all those questions and I think she proved today that she deserved to start that game and obviously getting her goal as well which is slotted in brilliantly um yeah Ellen, Ellen White deserves a lot of credit for the for just never giving up at the front and really pressing Scotland's back line and it, it caused them a bit of trouble like she was sliding in at last minute to, to put them off the ball of, of where they were trying to cross it to and, and, and things like that also for me one of the standout players was Alex Greenwood she's not really necessarily played too many too many games for England recently but she came on today and she kept Emsley quiet down that side um for most of the game and she was able to whip balls down the line for for me to catch on to in the first half and she was just solid second half i think you could tell that not just her but the whole team were getting a little bit tired so it, it's one of them the first world cup game the adrenaline potentially run off in the, in the second half but i think the the main thing that i loved about that first half was the link up between lucy bronze and the key to paris it just seemed to work and obviously they're going to be playing with each other in um in that Leon side next season so that's going to be amazing to see how that um communication develops but I just thought they knew where each other were like where they were both going to be and they, they were able to do the overlap they were able to play through and it, it just worked and that's where we were getting most of our joy and I actually thought Nikita Paris had an absolutely brilliant game one of the best games I've seen from her in a while especially in an England shirt but coming off the back of the season she's had she's full of confidence and you could tell especially when she stepped up for that penalty that she's just full of confidence so obviously England go into half time at 2-0 they, they come back out and there's a obviously uh Mead or White puts it puts it away for for a, a goal for this literally like a, probably even less than a minute into the first into the second half and you're thinking, yeah, this is good. Oh, yeah, this is this is really good. They've got a quick start. Scotland just got um caught on uh, caught 
early really maybe they weren't switched on for the second half i don't know but and then obviously it's given us as offside again the thing about the, the the officiate today is they gave the offside so late it was like you could see when she should have put the flag up when the player that was offside made contact with the ball is apparently when you're supposed to put the flag up but she let the next pass and then the next pass and then we scored and then it goes up and that happened on several occasions and i'm thinking that's so odd why you, you know that player's offside would you why would you not put the flag up and call it offside before the play progresses anymore like the player who's offside has made contact with that ball but the lino didn't put the flag up so it's everyone's there like the like euphoria of scoring the goal and then it's not a goal because the flag's gone up but you didn't see the flag go up until after the goal went in a, it was just bizarre so that kind of came and i think that kind of took this thing out of the game a little bit so scotland were able to get back in and fair play caroline we at one uh ran that midfield for me and i think kira walsh had a, had a big job to try and keep her quiet but also erin cuthbert was getting in the right positions at the right time but i think scotland's player of the match for me was definitely claire lemsley down that wing I said Greenwood had a good game at the second half. MZ had that. MZ had her in her pocket, and that outlet round the down the wing on the on the right hand side for for Scotland was was their best chance. But yeah, it, I think definitely England won the first half, and Scot Scotland won the second half. And England were very very lucky to be able to stay like ahead for for the whole of the game. They, so, so they did they did really well to hold on. I think there's a lot to to take from that game from phil neville's perspective and there's a there's definite there was definite fatigue that that came into the players legs and to, towards the end of the second half which, which is understandable the conditions were hot it must have been sweaty like the humidity was high so i think they did well to catch on they'll be so happy with those three points i'm beyond happy with the performance from the first half definitely slot to second half and i think that's something that they're, they're definitely going to need to work on and just defensively keeping switched on and really knowing where you position him i think steph houghton for their goal was, was caught out of position obviously he's the one that, that gives the ball away things like that i think when you come up against teams for example if we do reach the netherlands um in the in the the final 16 if we come second in the group all if buts but if that does happen against the likes of me, Demar, who are on fire at the moment and who who are so dangerous if you give them an inch, you're not going to be able to do that. So I think attackingly, we were perfect. Like we were getting in the right positions. We were playing passes through, out wide, using the wings massively to, to, to generate space. And the space between the two, the two um, wingers um, was insane. And there was so much space, especially in the first half for Mead on that side. But they, they caught they caught on to it scotland caught on to it in the second half but as i said like, i think it's going to be different when you're coming up at opponents who are going to be in your face all the time and are going to be pushing for goals all the time and i think that's something that's gonna that, that england are gonna have to adapt to and gonna have to learn to throughout the rest of this competition but it put it puts them in good stead getting their first three points of the tournament i think it was a great game to watch and obviously that's potentially one of their hardest games in the group stage, a home nations game where a lot of this country and Scotland are going to be um, watching it. And the support in the stadium was amazing. Like there were, there were a few empty seats, but the roar after the goals went in and the, the booing of the VAR and everything like that, it made for a great occasion. But yeah, I think Phil will be happy with the, um, the contribution that his girls made today. Um, and there's a bit about going past, that's great. But yeah, in terms of the quality of football, it was such a great display. There was tricks going all over, skills, just great passages of play. So I think it's it's something to be proud of. And I actually, I can't wait to see what else this tournament brings. There's been some great goals, some great games so far. And there's obviously there's so many more teams to come. Netherlands, USA, that they're all stacking up and they're all coming our way. So it's definitely worth getting onto the BBC with screening them all and definitely watching them and keeping an eye on what we're doing on this channel because we're going to be having loads of people coming in and, and chatting to us about the games. Lauren and Chris will be in the office. Obviously, yeah, you can tell I'm not in there. And they're going to be talking through England, this, this England-Scotland game in more in more more detailed manner, let's say. And then obviously going to be building up to the Argentina game. So yeah, make sure you like this video. Comment if you agree with everything that I've said. Comment if you don't agree with everything that I say. Definitely subscribe and we'll be back with another video.